Good evening. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I welcome you to the View from the Pew Canada with Sister Deborah Zita. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, our show will be coming out to you this fall. So I thank you for joining us and uh, for joining me uh, in this time in the word. I will, uh, this is just a preliminary uh, to let you know that this show is coming and what is this show about? What is View from the Pew Canada with Sister Deborah Zita, it's all about. Well, in this segment, we will be exploring the truth of the word of God. And our first teaching uh, will be in the book of Romans. And why the book of Romans, the Lord is taking us back to the basic. So today, I will be just setting up some foundation and giving you a taste of what it is to come. Just a taste. Um, um, and I hope that the time that I uh, will, will be uh, spending together will be fruitful, will be empowering, and will be uh, to strengthen your faith, especially in the uh, time that we live in today. So without further ado, I would like to share with you what the Lord has put on my heart uh, to share with you uh, just to set some foundation on the journey that uh, we'll be embarking on. So with everything happening since last year with COVID-19 uh, and the pandemic and um, all of the brouhaha with the world in general um, and where does the body of Christ fit in all of this chaos as we have all notice uh, the church door were the first to be shut down uh, when the pandemic hit. This has never happened in the history of the world. And for the very first time, even when we, we went through the World War, uh, uh, war World 1 and 2, the church has always been a place of refuge for people to run uh, to and um, get some um, uh, um, help and healing, protection, uh, it's safe heaven. And for this pandemic to hit and for the church to be deemed not essential was troublesome uh, uh, for me and to me. And I believe that many of us, uh, truly, it was it was bothersome. And just when we look, we see uh, liquor mart was still open, uh, cannabis stores were still open, and at some places we we had uh, you know people were still going to nightclub and parties, but yet the church was the church doors were closed. And I started pondering uh, the door of heaven. Father, what is happening here? Father, what is happening? Where are all of the heroes of God? Where are all of the mighty, valiant power, uh, prophets, apostles, evangelists? Where are they? We serve a God and his name is Jehovah Rapha. 
He's the Lord that healed us. How is it that we have a disease ravaging? And in the past, we have seen when a pandemic, it's not the first time that we, we have a pandemic situation in the world, but we have heroes of God always in the church, healing people, healing people. This is where desperate, uh, desperate people come for rescue. So then as I began to ponder and think about what was happening. And so I, I started um, studying the book of Kings. And I'm going to tell you a bit about the book of Kings. We got two books in the book of Kings. We got first Kings and second Kings. So in the first Kings uh, portion of the book, in the Bible, the book at a glance, I'm going to give you some background. So we got 22 chapters, 816 verses in First Kings, okay? And two together. First and Second King record the history of God people from the death of King David to the Babylonian captivity. Okay, a span of roughly 400 years. And as the tradition, uh, traditional title suggests, this book focuses on the kings of Israel and Judah. Uh, although the prophet Elijah and Elisha also play a prominent role. The book of First Kings divide divides nearly into two half. Okay, the first eleven chapters tell the story of the rise and fall of King Solomon. Now, his succession to the throne of his father, David, his uh, superlative wisdom, his vast wealth, um, his two grand building project of a temple and palace, and his utter folly in taking foreign, uh, foreign wives and worshiping foreign gods. The last 11 chapters uh, tell the story of the divided kingdom. Solomon, sons and their rivals wage civil war, uh, splitting the nation in two. Afterward, both the Northern kingdom, which is Israel, and the southern kingdom, which is Judah, uh, go into spiritual decline. So we know that when the house is divided among itself, it's decadence, it's trouble. And this is what we are seeing here. So many of the same events are also recorded in one, and two chronicles, which offers a, a, a somewhat more positive uh, portrayal of Solomon and the kings of Judah, emphasizing God's fulfillment of his promises to David. Now, the two books of King fully expose royal scene as a warning not to worship any other gods, this is the main message of First King. Turning away from the one true God is always a disaster, whether personally or nationally, or both. 
So in our world today, we hear a lot of talk about the decadence in the world. But I am coming to you a view from the pew with Sister Deborah Zita. It is for the believer. It is for the church of Jesus Christ. It is for us, brothers and sisters, to take a time to look at ourselves in the mirror and through the mirror of the word of God. We have, it seems though that we have lost our ways. The church, the body of Christ today is struggling in its identity. And therefore, us as believer, we are also struggling with our identity in Christ. And that is why the Holy Spirit, it is uh, mandated me to start this conversation and this time that we share together by going back and revisiting the basics. And so we'll be fully studying our very first book that we will study will be the book of Romans, right? Where we need to kind of learn about who we are in Christ, right? Because today, hmm, there is no clear difference between the world and the body of Christ. The life, the secular life, and the believer's life. That, it's a big question mark. Because the word Christian, we were called Christian. The word Christian that we are calling it, each other today. In the time of the apostles, it, they were called believers. When they started calling them Christians, it's where they, they saw there were true proof, clear uh, uh, mark, clear proof that they were followers of Christ. So therefore, they started calling them Christians, followers of Christ by the way they were living by the way they were carrying themselves, by the way they were talking, by the way they were acting. They couldn't separate their life from the life of Christ, our Lord and Savior. So today, for us believers, not to have a clear demarcation that set us apart, from the world, there is a problem. Because we are in the world, but we are not from the world, the Bible tells us. So if we are living and we are operating in the mind that was in Christ, how is it that the world cannot tell the difference? So that brings me into the theme. It's just a, a, a short exhortation that I'm gonna I'm just lay again foundation for what to expect from the view from the Pew Canada with Sister Deborah Zita. So our scripture for this exhortation will be coming from Second King. Second Kings, and we will start from uh, Second King chapter four, from verse thirty-eight. And the title of this exhortation of this study that we will we'll just uh, study that we'll have uh, together uh, this evening will be um, "Death in the Pot." There is death in the body of Christ. There is death in the church. 
there is death in the believer's home. There is death in all our life. And today, by the Spirit of God, I believe that when this world go forth, that miracles and wonders will confirm it as the Bible commanded it, and the Holy Spirit will breathe on the wings of this word, and you will find fertile ground in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, in our in our uh, 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 life, and we shall bear fruit in abundance, and many, many shall eat of it and be saved. Amen. So, from the book of, um, just checking my time here, from the book of, from the book of Second King, here, the book of uh, Second King, it's comprised of 25 chapters, 718 verses. The, east, the story in uh, the history in the second king picks up where first king left off. In the middle of the account of the two kingdoms, Israel and Judah, uh, that were formed when the United Kingdom was divided after Solomon died, um, if first king was the decline of the divided kingdom, then second king is the fall of the kingdom. Now we see when an individual or a nation or both turn their back on God, reject God and chase after anything else than the God of heaven they are we got the result first result is decline moral decline social decline government decline second we got what the fall of nation the fall of individuals the fall of the church the fall of of the nations, the fall of families, the decadence, the fall of society. And this is what, and this sound familiar, this is, we are in the heart, a very heart of that decadence. And that is why there is death in the part. So with that being said, let's quickly go into chapter 4. In chapter 4 of 2 King, Elijah, uh, no, sorry. So in chapter 4 of this book, 2 King chapter 4, um, the hero stories of Elisha, now Elijah, the prophet, was taken away. Elisha was actually learning. He was a prophet, another prophet trained by the prophet Elijah. Now, here we see the prophet Elisha after the death of his teacher. Look what is happening in his, his life. We see the prophet Elisha continue with a series of miraculous signs just like his master. The first sign that we have is the widow's oil. We have heard so many teaching, so many abuse of this chapter or this verse about the widows and the oil. This is the widow who was married to a prophet. And now that the prophet, her husband uh, is dead, this prophet was living as a prophet of God, he has, he was living in death. Does that sound like us today? We got mega churches, ministry we build based on what? Credit. We have loan up to our, like above our head, seeking and we can't find our way. 
And yet we say, the Lord called me to build this church. If the Lord called you to build that church, to build that ministry, why are you in death? My Jehovah uh, Jireh, the God that provided, he said exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think of or even imagine that God have commissioned you to build a ministry on loan and credit? God forbid. Something is not right here. And we're seeing in this chapter, in chapter four, the story starts with all these miracles and we see here comes Elisha. And this widow of a prophet comes to him begging because debtors are coming to take what belongs to them because the men now men of God prophet that is dead now and it's the them they come to claim what is rightful this and they they're coming to get her son the prophet the dead prophet's son are slaves to pay for the money their father bore. God forbid, I pray that this generation will not be a liability for us that are fallen away of God. My prayer is that our children, children, children will not pay for our liability because we don't know the God we claim to serve. Because we, 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 um, we make covenant, we enter into covenant with Egypt. There is danger. Egypt is the world. When you enter into covenant with Egypt, be careful. Because as the children of Israel went to Egypt, we saw Naomi, she left her country and run where? Where she thought that there was bread. Whenever we have seen the children of Israel, whenever there's famine, they run where? To Egypt. And guess what? We all know the result of it. They were slaves. They were enslaved until Moses came to deliver them. So, this is the first warning to us. So that is from verse 1 to 7. Now we see the gift of a son for a barren Shunammite woman. So we see that story from verse 8 to 17. The Shunammite woman is a very influential woman in her community. She was living well, but yet she was barren. She couldn't give birth. And here she recognized the man of God, Elisha, passing by. She told her husband, this man seems like a man of God. And she asked him to come to her home. She made a place for him to rest on his journey. And one day, Elisha asked, Oh, this woman has been so kind to me. What can I give in return? Give, and it shall be given unto you. What? Good measure. Pressing together. Running over. Yes. Shall what? Men give to your bosom. A, another passage that has been so abused and misused by manipulators in the body of Christ. Respectfully, I respect and humbly I come to you, but it is time that we call it what it is. The Bible tells us that we shall tell each other the truth and the body of Christ is suffering for many so-called prophets, apostles, evangelists, and all kinds, but feeding the children of God death poison that is killing the bible says we shall bear the fruit 
and bear the fruit in abundance. How come we don't? How come we don't? Something is wrong with that. So something is wrong with this picture. We have seen time and time again, we condemning uh, 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 girls, oh, they're prostituting themselves. We condemning people running to occultic power. What are we giving them in, 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 uh, in exchange? They are giving their life to Christ in the promises of what? Because we say that our God will provide for them. But they see us living lavishly on what? Loan and credit. And here they come. When you have a woman that have a child that is terminally ill, bring it to church and take it home every Sunday, every service, but yet, and we ask them to give, to give this, give this seed, and you're going to have this miracle. Believe me, I believe in giving. I believe in, in prophetic giving. I, give, I, I believe in tithing. I believe in offering. I believe in supporting the work of the ministry. I believe in that. But it must be done with understanding and discernment. The Bible tells us that when we come to the table of blessing, in, in uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we should come with what? Understanding and discernment. Because many have come to the table of blessing without, with, without understanding, without discernment. That's why there are many diseases among us, the Bible tells us. So yes, there is such a thing called the prophetic seed. There is such a thing called tithing. The tithe, which is 10% of all your earnings. Of all. Yes, there is such a thing, an offering, and there are different type of offering. I believe in all that. There shall be a result when there is no result. Thank you.